What is good, YouTube? It's your boy, Most Hated JC, back at y'all with another episode of that Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, my brothers and sisters. You see the fit, bro. I know, same hat, because it's the same day, bro. It's just about what? You know, three hours? <laughs> Actually, no, five hours. <laughs> Five hours after the last video, you know how to take a break, eat dinner, get clips from the new video that dropped today, which was funny enough, the investigation to this trial, you know, funny enough, time time lapse. Yeah, bro, just had to take a little break in between recordings, but that's why you see same hat, same fit, but this shirt means trial time, bro. Yes, you saw that trial former, bro. <laughs> a lot was revealed, bro. I'm not going to say too much because, you know... I'm gonna let the game do the talking, bro. If you guys excited as I am, bro, I don't wanna hold y'all up for too much longer. Let's get right back in the mix. Hope y'all having a good day. I know why I am. Y'all see what's on the screen, bro. Episode 5, Rise from the Ashes, final day, trial latcher. Let's do this, my brothers and sisters. Get your snacks, bro, because who knows what this child fan admin store for us. Let's go. <laughs> it feel good, bro. It feel good. Potentially. Nah, I don't think today's the finale, though. I'm not even gonna lie. Nah, I don't think... Unless this trial is, like, three hours long, there's no way we're wrapping everything up today, bro. <laughs> All we did was solve SL9 last trial. We still have this current case to deal with, and I doubt that's one trial worth, bro. But there's no investigation, though, so I wonder how they're gonna do this. February 25th, 1206, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Also, three hours passed in real time for them, too. <laughs> Sorry, Edgeworth. <laughs> I didn't mean to get you in trouble. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You see, that's my boy at the end of the day. This is my problem, not yours. Right, because God just flipped everything on to him like he's not to blame. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Here you go. <laughs> Here you go, fam. Yeah, you're interrupting a little something. A little heart to heart with my boy. Oh, guess I am. Uh, I'll come back later. <laughs> That's not how it works, bro. Why he always looks so sad? Wait, Detective Gumshoe! What is it? Like, right, bro? Might as well stay. You're ready to run the moment. You've got a lot of nerve, pal. Making a detective run all around while on duty. You're talking to Edgeworth, right? Because I didn't ask for anything. And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen you said this already. I take it Lana's having you run errands again? Let me tell you. This is the last time, pal! <laughs> Evidence law book? Okay. Here, she asked me to give this to you if there was a break in today's trial. If there was a break, why not before anyway? Like, Evidence law? Edric was talking about this just the other day. Okay. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. This was during Angel's trial, if I'm correct. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. We can only study some evidence law, really? Emma. <laughs> Emma's crazy, bro. If you watched the last video, you know, Emma, I'm looking at you. Like, it's not even, like, it wasn't intentional, but golly, really? She indirectly murdered somebody? The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? Why can't she just give it to me herself? Like, she's here. She said... If you're planning to take him on, you're going to need this book. She talking about God. Okay. Him. I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. From Mrs. Sky explains the two rules of evidence law. Evidence law securely slipped in the pocket. I'm about to look at that right now, bro. Hold on. Before anything, I'm going to look at this right now. Rule one for submitting evidence. Uh... Yeah, no evidence shall be shown without the pro approval of the police department, and unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. Got you. Just wanted to see it real quick. Does it look like that book will do you good any, any good now, though, right? Like, the investigation's over. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in that prosecutor's seat? Despite all these allegations being thrown at me? You talking to me or Gumshoe? Oh, Gumshoe. Mr. Edgeworth! The real trial today 
hasn't begun yet. Yeah, they're for sure gonna hit us with like a first time free heart trial, bro. Because in the main game, it was just one and done trials. Then with this DLC, they introduced two part trials. This has to be a three parter, bro, because there's no way we can wrap everything up in this trial today, bro. There's just no way. Like Edver said, the real trial hasn't begun. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. Emma Sky found out she unwittingly, unwittingly caused the man's death. And now, you're telling me you want to do more? You've got to be kidding me, pal! You're missing the point, detective. Like you say, he's not a he's not an attorney. You know, he's not nothing. Not a lawyer. He's a detective, bro. He don't get it. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. <laughs> you just you just thought about it? She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. Yuck. Y'all know how I feel about that. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him. No matter what it takes. Why don't you say that out loud, Phoenix? This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Ugh, I like that energy. You know? Ugh, Phoenix got that dog in him. February 25th, uh, 1252, District Court, courtroom number 9. Let's lock in. Let's see how this child gonna go, bro. Oh my gosh. This is, this is a crazy... Like I said, this final trial... Might be one of the craziest we've ever done this whole game, bro. Blue will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. <laughs> He's out the door. He's resigning, bro. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well. Ahem. Normally, this is where the prosecution calls for the witness. But, uh... <laughs> this isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have uh, struck a bargain. Like, bro, just say it. Damn. Like, you're stuttering a lot for somebody who's not doing the voice acting. Think of me here. <laughs> you think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. It's just, you see, everyone has been talking and... So I can see why Edward would retire, cause like, like Gumshoe said, his credibility's done after this trial. Oh, very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? But there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement. Right? I only called them Jake Marshall this whole game. <laughs> but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Facts. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? It's the only way we proceed, bro. Unbelievable. Edward has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution proposal. I like when me and him, like, I know I said this last episode, but like, I love when me and Edgeworth, even though we're on different sides, helping each other achieve the same goal, bro. The truth. This is how it was with, uh, I forgot. It was one of the last trials, bro. Like, before this case. Then it's settled. The, uh, defense may now call for the next witness. I think it was the trial before Edgeworth's trial that he was, that we were alley-ooping like this, bro. It's fire. Mr. Wright. Yo. You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness. You're going to actually make me pick like. This trial is as good as over. The defense calls. The time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Yo. Okay. Well, we're calling Damon Gunn, no? <laughs> yeah, we're calling Damon Gunn. You know, I gotta slap the desk. I'm sorry, bro. It's another Ace Attorney day. <laughs> it will come to an end soon, bro. Just just take it for now, okay? My fault. Damon Gaunt! The defense calls Damon Gaunt to the stand! I'm sorry, bro. It has to be done. It's for the content. <laughs> D Damon Gaunt? What does he have to do with anything? What doesn't he have to do with? As a defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gaunt has first-hand knowledge of the crime. 
I feel we should hear what he has to say about it, right? Like, who else you thought was gonna call Mike Meekins for round two? No. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. The chief of police, come on now. Wouldn't you agree, your honor? Exactly. True! Alright, bailiff, please escort Mr. Gunn to the stand! I think I hit my desk a little too hard, my hand's still tingling. <laughs> Witness, please state your name and occupation! What is this, some kind of practical joke? No, bro, we know we know what you've been up to, bro. Trust me, I've been sussing you for way too long. I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? You said this last time, your threats don't scare nobody. Your name and occupation. There you go, Edgeworth. Press him about it. <laughs> so, you want to play hardball, eh? Please, Mr. Guns! Right, bro, go with it! Damn, always so difficult! Fine! My name is Damon Gunn, I'm the acting chief of police! Now then, Chief Gunn, the court requests to hear your testimony! Oh, right, oh, what's with the grim face? I know what you've been up to! Pass what? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered the prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. No, sir. <laughs> There's still a lot. That, uh, <laughs> you see me and him on the same page. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Yeah, bro, like, that. what I've been saying this whole time, you and Marshall were interrogating, bro, and only Marshall went after him? Like, come on now. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. Or a little bit of both. <laughs> you are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. So does nobody, like, take a, in account that he always threatens people when they try and press him, bro? Like, nobody notices this? Weapons? Sure, take my testimony for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. Abusing his power. What? Is that true? Phoenix, come on. I'm afraid so. Chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. That's so crooked. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Exactly, because then you look guilty. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, this turns out to be a big waste of time. Don't say I didn't warn you. Oh, it won't be a waste. <laughs> it won't be a waste, bro, because we are very sus of you, sir. Very well. The witness may now begin his testimony. Let's hop into the steak and potatoes, but before anything else, you know, gotta get my mandatory sap. Let's go. That's the night incident. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. I was gonna say, is that it? <laughs> when I went to my office, I found Lana there. She didn't say you went to the office, bro. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, it had nothing to do with the forgery. Hey, yeah, that's crazy. He really just threw her under the bus like it was nothing, bro. That when Dark was arrested? Him. He was lying on the floor unconscious. Yep. Is he gonna fess up to- Damn, bro. Damn, Emma. Wait, wait, but then again, where was the vase for Neil to even write it on, bro? Like, we don't see no vase here. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. Okay. I see. Everything seems pretty clear cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, I'd better hit him hard and fast. Pause? So what, I can't press everything? I'm gonna still press everything. You got me twisted. <laughs> you got me so twisted. I'm gonna press everything. No, 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 we're questioning that day. Press it. Y'all know how we do things. As I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right. I guess you can say I'm a workaholic. Like, bro. 
After winning his award, Neil was all fired up too. That's probably what spooked Dark and made him run away like that. That doesn't even make sense. Was the defendant Lana Sky also present in the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. Okay. Thank a long story short, we slept up. Nah, you gotta go into detail, bro. You have to go into detail. So the two of you ran immediately after him, right? Only Neil did. This is what I kept asking every time. That's right. The Dark made it to the elevator first. So Neil and I split up. Okay. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say he got lucky. That's not funny. A man died. What's this about a power outage? Like I said, he could have went and triggered it his damn self going downstairs. Oh, that? The elevator stopped all of a sudden and I got the shock of my life. Well, probably not as shocked as when shocked as Neil when that knife went into his heart, though. Like, he's clapping and laughing like this is a crazy image to put out to the world. That's not funny. No, I'm saying. I went to my office. You found Lana there. Talk about it. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Golly. Neil and that serial killer were lying in a heap on the floor all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on the floor. Yeah, this don't make sense. I mean, he did try and say Lana arranged the scene. But, like, if Neil actually died with stabbed by, you know, how'd he end up on Lana's side with Dark on the floor on top of Dark with a knife in his back? Like, what? Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Like, what? Next to them were those two poor girls. Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. What the hell? Right, Phoenix. Apparently she had already... Yeah, talk about it some more. How can you know that? That was definitely too hard. <laughs> because of the victim's body, it had already been moved. So that means... So that means... My fault. You found the body near Lana's desk. That's right. I think you said earlier... It was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Indeed we did. Yes. What you gotta say about it? Anyway. The hell? We're just moving on like that? Had nothing to do with the forgery. Talk about it. So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office? That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt. But moving a body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. You gonna throw me a lob or something? Like... If you're going to stare at anything, you'd be better off staring at the court record. Worthy, worthy. Always the smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties Gaunt to the forgery? Right! Lana did admit to forging evidence. But that can't be the whole truth. Somehow I've got to link Gaunt to the incident. Okay. I have to link Gaunt to the incident. Interesting. I mean... I could prevent- I could present the stuff we found, right? Why I could present either of these things? I'ma say it. <laughs> I'ma say cause that it has to be that, because that's the only thing we found in his safe, you know? So I'ma go to the last thing he says and prevent and present the jar or the leather thing. Nothing to do with the forgery. So, like, you're lying. There we go. It could have been either the cloth or the jar. If you really had nothing to do with the forgery. Then how do you explain this? There we go. Ooh, what's that? And what's that on it? A handprint? Okay. Chief Gaunt, your explanation, please! Look at him looking all foolish. Like, bruh, talk about it. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me, son. 
and now he shoots on his right to remain silent. Huh? My dear Rido, don't you know the second rule of evidence law? Oh no, I got the rules right here, bro. <laughs> Must be relevant to the case on trial. This is definitely right <laughs> relevant. The the supposed murderer handprint is on it. Where like where's it from? Like it's relevant, bro. I'm not foolish. Uh uh oh, not this again. Evidence law. Rule two. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. Tell me how is that rag relevant to this trial? It appears the defense was not prepared. Are you serious? I guess it's too early to use this piece of evidence. Are we serious? Please accept my profound apologies, Chief. But you mind giving the defense another chance? Well, okay, I'll do it just this once, but only because you ask, Uji. Thank you. I assure you the defense is terribly sorry. <laughs> what? Yeah, sorry I didn't nail you. What? Okay. So now, it's the, I'm glad it didn't take points off for that, though. That would have been so stupid. Objection. The jar's already evidence, then. You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery. There we go. But I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Let me save here, then. <laughs> I did the right thing now, but I forgot we didn't admit that in evidence already. My fault. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. That's the blue badger you showed us earlier. Like, this is the blue badger now? That's just what it is? A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. What you gotta say? Talk about it. Not only that... But the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? Inside his desk. Did you not hear me? Turn your hearing aid up. You see, Chief Gaunt, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. There you go, Phoenix. Talk about it. Chief Gaunt. What's the meaning of this? Ho! Oh. You just call me a ho? Watch your mouth. Here's a defense attorney who may even rival worthy. I've been cooking him every child. So you admit to it then? That you were involved in the forgery? Who, me? Or do you mean you? Like, what is he talking about? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well... You were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Okay? Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so too. I have two witnesses, bro. Like, isn't that right, Rhino? All right, shut your ass up. However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Right, I have witnesses to back me up, bro. Shut your... Shut your lying self up. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. He's, he is crazy for trying to point at everybody else when he's the main one doing this stuff. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. Pause! Whoa. What? Detective Gumsu solidly drops any further. He'll end up paying to work. Right, bro? Hey, that's so foul. Yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and the relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. Oh my god, just shut up and get to lying so I could cut through your words, bro. That is a forgery. I, I hate this dude now, just like that. We saw how cool I thought he was when we first met him. Now, you number one op. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list. For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I participated in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Oh, brother. I can't wait to see this dude's breakdown. Hmm. <gasps> Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor? When investigating the crime scene, 
You should have been more careful to observe protocol. Shut up. You do understand that I'm chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Not after I'm done with you. Ain't nobody scared of that. Oh. Indeed. I believe I will press charges so you won't make the same mistake again. How's everybody just okay with this? Like... My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is... Well, you know... Alright, Oogie. In return, though... I know, I know. That place, right? What? Right, what are these guys telepathic? Like, what are y'all talking about? Free couple, bro. <laughs> Evidence of forgery. Let's expose this man. Press him. We press everything first. I'd appreciate it if you stop making these ridiculous allegations. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't care. What? I'll have you know back in the day. Phoenix, why are you admitting the crimes? I once broke into a cattle ranch and tipped. Master Wright, what are you saying? Anyway, you can't prove you didn't carry in the evidence, can you? If you have proof to the contrary, you're going to need a later. Later? What are you talking about? What else? I'm talking about when Rhino's prints are found. Yes, if they're found inside my safe, it would prove his investigation was illegal. What? I've never faced anyone as slimy as this, right? He's a scumbag. He's nasty. How can't I? What do you mean by that? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. Yes. This is where I present the ID card. If concealing evidence found at a crime scene is a forgery... I'm not through speaking yet, Rhino. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. I think I present the ID card there. They were found after Dark was convicted and they're worthless. Holy Why? Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It wasn't. It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. Bro, we know it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. He's such a loser. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right. The Chief is talking about a possibility. So long as you can't rule that out. Your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, Rhino. Think about it. Okay, there's no reason I participate in a forgery. How much more things you gotta say? I'ma still press these two just in case, bro. But I think it's the ID card. I think it's the ID card earlier. How can you look me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. Remember? Who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder yet. You're right, it was an accident. But in the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Sky. Yep. Well, now do you see? Alright. There's the crime scene. Let's what? press this real quick, just in case. Really, Chief Gaunt. At the very least, there is one very large benefit you've reaped from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have. Chief of Police. This is why I press every single thing before presenting evidence, even though I think that may be the right choice. Because look, whole new dialogue now. Oh! The resolution of the SL9 incident secured a promotion to Chief, which I did bring up myself, you know? That in itself is sufficient motive! Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Oh, that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? I mean, yeah, I caught you. <laughs> what do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SR9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes, he was going to be made chief anyway. Okay. Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. Oh, brother. 
So that means there's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. For Lana! Right, he did it for Lana. Don't be silly worthy, you know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. That's such a terrible thing to say out loud. <laughs> like, what? There, it's out in the open now. Ugi, would you mind if I changed my testimony a little? Good thing I didn't present nothing. By all means, please do. Talk about it. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Hi. Press that. Now we press that. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl? Lana's little sister, was it? Yeah, bro. If you think I felt sorry for her, you better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. That's why you're a scumbag now, like. <laughs> you seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Oh, brother. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped someone out? Point out accomplice? Yes, he would have helped somebody out. Point out accomplice. True. You might not help out anyone for their sake. But if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Like, bro, it's obvious. He had to have assisted Lana. Like, what? Mr. Wright. It appears you're positively determined to portray the chief. As a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. That's not what I said at all, you old bastard. Like, that's not what I said. Very well, then. Who is this person you believe Chief Khan may have helped forge evidence? Uh, duh, Lana. Like, what? <laughs> like, what? Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky? The, the defendant? Like, duh. I believe it's quite obvious in light of this. Like, bro, am I the only one with a functioning brain here? Let me say before I make a mistake. <laughs> when I start talking, that's when stuff start going wrong. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Bro, Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. But even if they didn't do anything, would Emma have gone to jail for this, bro? Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gaunt, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Right, he gets to be the, you know, he gets to be by himself. He's no longer a duo. Self-profit? What do you mean? And also, he has somebody under his thumb as the chief of prosecutor. Like, bro, come on now. After the SO9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed chief prosecutor at the prosecutor's office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gaunt. Right, we're on to you, bro. But, but how would he profit from all this? He would be able to use the chief prosecutor as his puppet. There you go. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations, which he literally abused this entire trial. Like, judge. You mean to tell me? But despite the chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Yo, pop him out your mouth! Damn! Pop him out your mouth and use your brain, bro. Like, golly. Can we get a new judge next game? Like, he's too old for this. Oh, wait. You must be puppet as in someone forced into his bidding. Never mind. Idiot. Admit it, chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive to appoint her as chief prosecutor so you could control her. I keep looking over here because I want to make sure nothing messes up when I hit my desk. <laughs> right on, my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? Yeah, she told me. Thanks. For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana? She told me at the end of the investigation, bro. He's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she testify against God. 
I'm afraid without any proof, it's all about nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless... That is also what happened in this incident. What you getting out of Edgeworth? This incident? Uh, which one would that be? The current case, come on, like, bro! Of course I'm talking about... Exactly, the murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Talk about it. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. I'm like, come on, bro. This judge is too, like, I'm telling you, bro. Next game, when we come back eventually, the Lord knows when, I better see a younger judge, because, like, this dude, like, how is he a judge? How has he been judged for so long? <laughs> it don't make no sense. His brain don't work right, bro. Like, who does he know? Chief Gaunt, like, <laughs> Worthy, you better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get it. Like, bro, he's literally threatening us when we provide evidence. Like, how is this not weird? This what do you mean? Now you have a problem with it? What he means, your honor, is that Chief Gunn is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Why didn't he yell that one? <laughs> Why was I the only one yelling? Not only that, but the chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. <laughs> exactly, bro. Me and Edgeworth going, you know, assist for assist. Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, you! You can't be serious! I get it, back in the day y'all was besties, but he's not a good person. Pop him out your mouth and be a real objective judge, please and thank you. Like, damn! Huh? This... This is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency! To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder? That's... I... I... Uh, uh, impossible! What spells impossible is I'm possible, bro. Your honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgar said in easier to understand in language. Like you say, they always trying to hop on me because they got everybody else meat so lodged down far their throat, bro. Like, get off. Stop gawking, bro. Use your brain. Damn. It's too late, Mr. Wright. What you mean? There's no turning back for us now. Exactly. We going all in, bro. Uh, me and my boy. It looks like he's the one who decided to go through with this. Oh, this is he! Me and my boy! Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief of high-ranking officer of the law is involved in this murder? Yes. Good question. What's up? Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gunn is just a man. That's what I'm saying. Stop. Take his meat, like, from your esophagus, bro. He's not Jesus. Like, he's a just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. All right, then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got, and it better be good. Hold on, before that? Before that? Damn it. Show, show us this evidence that ties Chief Gunn to the murder of Detective Goodman. I wanted to say first. Uh... That ties Chief Gunn to the murder of Detective Goodman. Well, I did say earlier that this is going to help us because of, we still don't know 777 and that was a password to uh, Gunn's safe, bro. So this is, this is what ties him to Detective Goodman, bro. It has to be. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. It has to be this. Like, to time to Detective Goodman, this is it, bro. It was either this or the screwdriver. <laughs> there was one ID on the list that we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. Seven, 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 seven. <laughs> the only time I'm going to say all of them. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my car number. It's your number. <laughs> right, shut up. What? How do you know that? The safe and Chief Gaunt's office requires a, court, a code to open. A seven digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean? Like, bro, you really thought I know that? <laughs> I'm afraid so, your honor. That code was seven sevens. 
the same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Get to testifying, God. Come on now. <laughs> Go swimming. Like, Chief God, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Look at him hurt. Look at him hurt about it. Hey! Look at him hurt about it. Order, order. Chief God, what do you have to say? Look at this. Nothing. The defensive search in my office was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. Hold on now. <laughs> Hold on now. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. Look at him pissed. We ain't never seen that face. Chief Gunn, so you admit it? So you, yeah, he admits it, bro. You answered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Talk about it. What about it? On Chief of Police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Look at him ego tripping, power tripping. He's not like that. Tell me. When you entered the, uh, the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. No, you killed Bruce Goodman in there, bro. We know. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day. Would he? Uh, uh, of course not. Why would he be? Look at him. I hadn't seen him in days. Objection. That's Cap, your honor. <laughs> you hadn't seen him in days, Chief Tom? I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. Because of the lost item reports. What do you mean? This show's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. Can you let me talk, you old bastard? Jesus, shut your mouth! No, it isn't, Your Honor. This child's purpose is to determine the truth. Exactly. Shut up. If Chief Gott met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? Right, bro. Talk about it. In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gunn on the day of the crime. There we go. Lost item report. Lost item report. I'm already knowing. It can only be submitted to the Chief of Police. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. I'm cooking right now. Or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filled out a lost item report, and now me and Edward are Chris Paul and Blake Griffin throwing Lob City, boy! He would have had to give that report to the chief of police. Yet you are in possession of the report, which means you can't be sure if he filed it. Shut, shut, shut up. He filed it. How do I know you asked? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to. Only the detective in charge of the evidence can see the case after it's closed. Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Ooh, yeah, y'all thought I forgot the laws, huh? No. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gaunt. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. Yeah, hold your heart, bro. I accompanied him? I mean, you used your card, bro. Like, there's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Oh, my, I'm cooking this man. Hold on. Let me guess what you're going to say next. I hate that our undershirts are matching, but like, the black button's up is clean. <laughs> uh, the chief of police murdered poor Goodman. Yeah, bro. Like, what? Exactly. You think I'm gonna be like, Damn, you're right, you are chief of police. My fault, OG. You like, no. But wait. The chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of this sort. Objection! Thank you, Edgeworth. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, but that's not possible. And you just said you went to the evidence room, bro, and that's the only time your card was used, bro. According to the record, your card was on... I'm saying! Your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body! Right! No! What was that animation? <laughs> you saw that? Chief God! You didn't! 
You saw that animation, bro? That was nuts! The murder was most likely a spur of the moment crime, for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder, right? After the murder, you contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Pulled you, you like, you know, abusing your power once again, bro. He got too cocky. And I know I said that, I think I said this quote in persona, bro. When our friend is watching Snowfall. What was the, uh, damn, what was the line uh, the dude said? Avi. He was like, he was like, never get too greedy because you are, like, eventually you're gonna slip up or your greediness is gonna come back to bite you. Like, you know, you're gonna leave a trail due to your greediness. Something along that line. It's been some time since I watched it. But this applies right here. He was constantly ego tripping. I'm the chief of police. I can do whatever I want. Nobody can touch me. And now, everything is starting to come back to him because only the only person that can do this is the chief of police, bro. He got too greedy for that position. Ego trick using that, abusing that power, and now look where it got him, bro. That's a message of life, bro. Snowfall be dropping gems, one of the greatest shows I've ever seen, bro. Let's go. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. Uh, you're forgetting, Mr. Wright. That the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office's parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Exactly, bro. The only person who could pull this off is somebody of your stature. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey, you! Take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so! Chief Gunn, you left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. He did? In all this time, I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. Let me see if I can see what he's talking about. The parking ticket? Is that what he's talking about, maybe? Because I don't think we used that yet. But I don't know, is that too early on? It had to have been, yes. He used Edgeworth because he told dude to get the screwdriver. We use the screwdriver now. That's what he's talking about. Because he told Edgeworth, he planted the thing in Edgeworth's car and then told Edgeworth. Yo bro, get this from this case for me and bring it back. And you know, the body was in Edgeworth's car and then he moved it there, bro. And that's how every- Oh my god! That's how everything unfolds! If you know you- if, Come on, bro. I, I can't really put in a word because I'm hype right now, but... Come on, peak game, bro. Lock in. How could the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence! To move the victim's body? Chief Gaunt used this. It's the screwdriver, bro. If it's not the screwdriver, it's Edgeworth's parking ticket. It's one of the two. I'm going with this one. This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. I'm flowing this trial. What's that? The screwdriver? Edward! Ring a bell? Like, come on. But what does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime, and we have his parking ticket if you need even more evidence, bro. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... There you go. There you go! There you go! Cause if the body was or, was found in Edgeworth's car, it was already planted in there. And then he just gave Lana the call to make sure the body was in the prosecutor's office, using his, pu his puppet as the chief of prosecutors. Only Gaunt could have done this, bro. I was asked to go by Chief Gaunt, no less. There you go. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. There you go. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Only, only you could have done that, bro. After the ceremony ended that day. Talking about, I'm a workaholic. You're a criminal. Shut up. I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office, but he needed to make sure the body was there so his puppet could do the work. But you did, because Chief Gaunt asked you to. You mean I, I. The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. 
Like, I don't have to say much else here. Right, I think it's obvious to everybody what happened. The body was moved by that car! Like, I don't have to say much, bro. I'm cooking. I can take the goodness body. It was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I mean, that's where it was discovered in the first place. Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? That's, yeah, that's what I thought. There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice. Miss Lana Sky. And look at him, silent. Oh my god, I'm cooking. Order, order, order. What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to the defense's outrageous accusations? I'm saying when I say it, it's outrageous accusations. But if God or Edward said this, it's gospel. Like, oh my god, this judicial system sucks. <laughs> Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. Right. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away, because she would have been completely bloody. It was exactly the opposite. It is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gunn, please say something. Yeah, I know you're crying for your boyfriend now, huh? I believe. What? Your time's up. Whoa. How did he just pull out a gun and shoot everybody? <laughs> That's not funny, but like, what? Like, he's he always like once he gets back into a corner, he uses threats, bro. That just shows without his power, he's nothing but a chatterbox. My time's up. Sorry, Rido, but I'm having lunch with the district attorney general after this. We have to get going if we're going to make it in time for the early bird special. You think I care about that right now, Objection. bro? But. The cross-examination isn't finished yet! Remember what I told you earlier? The police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. This is just proving himself guilty, bro. Weapons... Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now! But... That is not a right to be- <sighs> Oh my god! <laughs> I've been going crazy- It's- <laughs> I've been going crazy with the voice acting today, bro. Two trials back to back. I come on, bro. I deserve a break a little bit. What? That is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. If this ain't if this ain't proof enough of his guiltiness, I don't know what is. So you're going to just run away after all of this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, worthy. That's literally what you're doing. I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Lana's the proof she told me. Mm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Oh my God, get his nuts off your chin. Damn. Nuts. Bro, I'm not reading your lines no more. Well, Mr. Wright, like, bro, shut up. Y your Honor? Do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief got murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Guy dispose of the body. Do I have any concrete proof? I mean... Because we don't count testimonies as evidence, though. But, like, I have proof. Lana told me herself! I mean, I have no evidence. I mean, I have no proof, but I have a, a, a testimony. It's no use showing evidence I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present, I have no conclusive evidence, but I have testimony. <clears throat> See you, Udgi. In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the chief. What? Here's a tip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, right on. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, Udgi, I leave the rest to you. Can I finish talking? Okay. <laughs> You're not gonna let him walk? Okay. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to a senior officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. 
What? I'm like, bro. Little lady, look. Hmm? Maybe we should have a word with her. La Lana Sky, like, come on. Like, just because I don't have evidence. This is that's the only thing that messes me up about this game. Because the testimony is evidence, bro. Like, it, it kind of is. Like, Lana confessed to me all, everything. I feel like they, I should be able to use that. Like, that should have been a piece of evidence in there. But it's not. So, like... Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth beyond this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. Exactly. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness! In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is to- See y'all? Like, I don't just be yapping. I know my stuff. <laughs> Sometimes. Like, I know my stuff a little bit. But Chief Gunn has invoked his right to refuse to testify. Phoenix, come on now. Catch up, bro. There's still someone else. One more witness who can answer all the questions. Raised in this trial, someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? <laughs> Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Right, I'm calling all witnesses. Don't worry, Edgeworth, I know exactly who it is. Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. I'm ready. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? We may not be willing to tell the truth, but we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls for one Miss Lana Sky, age 29. Call it. Come on now. The defendants? Miss Lana Sky? Yeah, I said it. She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 p.m. on February 21st. There we go. This is such an unorthodox method, but, like, it's the only way because the people, they put the wrong people in power, bro, and they're abusing it. Her task? To dispose of the victim's body. She told me herself, bro. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. <gasps> Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. I like how we're working together, but on different sides. Very well. The court will now take its final recess for the day. I know we couldn't wrap it all up in one trial, bro. Next episode, which might be the finale, the final trial for real. The final part, I mean. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. That's what I'm talking about. This court is now in re- Hold on. Who is that? Huh? <gasps> Here he go! I thought you had lunch to get to! Chief Gun, I thought you were going to eat! Exactly, now he wanna come back when we caught him. Listen good, Lana! He's talking to Lana? I don't think you need me to tell you this, but... If you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible con- Like, he can't get away with this! There's no way people are just seeing this and like... That's the chief of police. Like, no, bro. This is illegal. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. But she wouldn't even. One, she's a minor. Two, it was involuntary. Like, it, she didn't intentionally murder him. Like, it was accidental. Can she still even go to jail for that? Ah! This isn't good. Of course, you never support such outrageous claims anyway, right? Like, they talking about... You really accusing the chief of police of blackmail? He's doing it in front of your face! Like, bro! Just something to think about. Alright then, I've got a lunch date to me. Like, they say... You're cute, you're putting some heavy claims on him, will he really blackmail? He's doing it in 4K. Okay, if there aren't any further objections... This court is now in recess! Like, bro, what? How is that just cool? But hey, you know, I knew it wasn't gonna get wrapped up today. It just wasn't possible. But next trial, the finale, bro. The show finale next trial. Well, next part, because this is all one trial. February 25th, 2.04 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby number two. I love when me and Edgeworth work together, bro. It's, it's poetry. And that, can we talk about how I bodied that trial? I didn't get a single question wrong, bro. Like, come on. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Look at him saying we. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. You're a bro. That's my homie at the end of the day. That chief. He's something else, eh, pals? 
Detective Gumshoe! <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that, bro. Ah, uh, don't worry. I've already decided where to work now. At your office! Working with little old me? My office? He working with little old me from now on? Okay! I like that! Sure! I'll take the place of that top knotted girl you used to work with. Oh, he's talking about Maya? Damn. Are we gonna see Maya again or not, bro? Like, I wanna know. Did he mean... Yeah, because Maya went off the train at the end of the last game, bro. Is she gonna come back for the second one? Did he mean Maya? We miss you, Maya. Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gaunt's done it again. How is it he always gets the upper hand? Abusing his power? It's not fair. He has the right to refuse to testify. <laughs> Little downright. Remember what the judge said? But Chief, that is not a right to be casually informed. There are certain risks to be considered. Right. Risk. What did he mean by that? We need to look at more law stuff, bro. It's simple. If the chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. You mean it's forfeit his right to say anything too. Is that gone? Oh, Emma. Okay. Emma, are you okay? What's good, fam? Yeah. When I came to, I was in the medical office. She did pass out at the end of the last trial. I'm like, where was she? I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. So God has nothing more to say now. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. Exactly. That's the thing, bro. If, if we want to do our job, we can't have no favoritism unlike Lana. Because that's what got Lana in this mess. Favoritism to her sister. I can't be. I got to be objective. If you want to be an attorney, detective, police, or anything, you have to stay objective, bro. No cognitive biases. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah. I finally know what really happened. You think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. Yeah, God's garbage. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. And now we know why. Now we know why. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gaunt's orders, right? Disassociating herself. She must have shut herself up deep in... Exactly. Disassociation. To force herself to do anything and everything that she told her to do. Truly become a puppet. Truly. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I... I murdered Mr. Marshall. This music is not fitting the dialogue right now, bro. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Uh, sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> Chief God may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that mar into that armor. If only you remember that the day you came to me. I... I see. But well, we better get back. It's time for the final act. Oh my gosh, the finale next episode. Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm going with you. I need my assistant. I need my assistant, bro, you know? I want to be there when Lana tells the truth. Okay, let's go, right? It's time to end this. Me and my boy! To be continued, me and my boy! Edgeworth, this is when I like Edgeworth, when he's my boy! When he, well, like, I'm telling you, bro, I know I sound like a broken record, but with me and Edgeworth are working together, that's literally poetry in motion, bro. All right, y'all. That does it for today's episode of Phoenix Wright's Ace Attorney, bro. Next episode, the finale! the final part of this trial. I knew it was gonna be a three-part trial because there was no way we were gonna wrap everything up today unless it was like a three-hour trial, bro. That just, <laughs> that's just not how it works, bro. 
our first ever three-parter trial, bro. I'm enjoying this, bro. Like I said, I am so glad I finally picked this game back up. And to finish it, bro, next time we hop on this, it should say finale in the title, bro. The true finale. You know, we beat the main game. Now the DLC finna be complete. And we are free to return to the second game whenever we see fit as a community, bro. Hey, if you have been enjoying this series as much as I have been and you are excited to see how everything comes to a close, bro, make sure you leave a like and comment so that you've been enjoying the series and you want to see it finished out. If you are new here and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, turn that bell so you're always in the know when new videos going up, because trust me, you don't want to miss a single one. Y'all see, everything I post be heat, bro, you just got to give it a chance. You never know what you're going to like, man. Just, just trust your boy's word. And that button is right next to it for, for most people. You know, the big join button. If you have some extra funds, want to show some extra love to a bro, get some cool emotes and badges or extra perks depending on what tier, consider joining the membership, bro. And if you don't see that join button, the membership is also always linked down in the description for a member's link, bro. Like I said, not mandatory, but very much greatly appreciated, bro. It really is. Trust. And if you want to be in the little most hated news, follow the socials that are displayed right here. They're also always linked down in the description below for direct link to every social you want to follow me on. Keep an eye on the community tag because I do try and post on there. And if you want to get in tune with the community to a next level, bro, you got the Discord link in the description, bro. Most hated Mafia HQ in the description of every single video. Pop out, bro, considering joining a Discord, bro. It's just, it's just a community thing. And, uh, yeah, bro. As always, I love and appreciate y'all for all the love on the channel, on all my videos, everything I do. Truthfully, love y'all. See y'all in the next video, bro. Wanna? It's all up to you, bro. You the only one who can put a stop to this.